definitely love to see the head of the DNC decide, okay, who actually has a chance and who doesn't. And right now it looks like the opposite, especially given the fact that there's now, I think, 25 candidates. I think we've since gotten one more just in the last week, uh, not even the last week, the last, like, three days. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it was interesting overall. I think the first debate was certainly very quiet. Uh, Warren was clearly the, the front runner initially, and I think uh, to some degree – Beto kind of took away some of that thunder, and even Julian Castro to some degree, although I would like to ask Julian Castro on the topic of family separation, given that he was uh, the HUD secretary under Obama, why he did not know that that special law that was on the books during the Obama years, why he didn't try and contribute to rescinding that law so that we wouldn't have what we're seeing now on the border since, you know, when Jeff Sessions was attorney general and now under uh, Bill Barr in terms of family separation. So, I, again, this goes back to – Kenny mentioned earlier the point of reputation and records a la Kamala Harris, and I think that's something that Castro – it should have been brought to Castro's attention during that first debate. And, uh, speak- and the second debate was fireworks just as I kept predicting. So speaking of... Uh, so more fireworks than you see at the 4th of July. <laughs> so with all the fireworks and... It's just... At the, the I listened to some of the debate uh, from today. Mm-hmm. And what I noticed were like the same issues were being kicked around. Everybody was ranting and giving a little tangent on it. But very few solutions were actually being brought about. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take it back to something I posed before because you have an incumbent president, an incumbent candidate, who's the president, who's Donald Trump, and already pretty much has the full backing of the Republican Party. And then you have like just an all-star team, an alternate team of all these Democratic candidates who have all these different ways they want to do things. And you look at the Democratic Party and you ask, well, what is your mission statement? Like, because technically the country is a corporation in Vermont. You can Google it. America's a corporation, but whatever. You look at any corporation in business law and they have articles of confederation, things that they stand for, things of what they're going to do, things that they abide by. And you look at the Democratic Party after these two debates and you ask yourself, what do you guys collectively stand for? Right. But what, like, what solutions do you see coming? And truth be told, I look at uh, Biden, and his numbers have pretty much gone down since he said he was going to, you know, run for president. And you look at all the candidates. Yang is, a, you know, a popular candidate, at least for being an outsider. I ask you. Even with all this, even with all the debates and everything, what are at least three core values or principles or goals that the Democratic Party should actually have locked down before they even think about prepping someone to be candidate of the party? Right. Well, I think that the one issue that Democrats have, Democrats themselves and Democratic voters have all rallied behind that a lot of these candidates somehow have not has been the whole subject of Medicare for all. Yeah. I think that is something that looking back at the last 20 years, historically you had Obamacare being passed in, I believe it was in 2010. And if we're talking about how this party is going to somehow progress and progressive politics, then this idea of Medicare for all, you know, this idea that it's it's a right for every human being to have access to health care, that is the next step. That would be one of those three components. Another major component is uh, trying to basically readjust our whole criminal justice system, especially how it relates to mass incarceration and also how it manages – other issues including you know equal pay for 
men and women in the workplace, as well as trying to maintain sort of some degree of civility in terms of giving LGBTQ people all the rights that they, the unalienable rights that they have fought for and so hardly deserve. So I think hardly hard fought. That's the second element. The third element is a lot of these guys need to really get together and figure out what they're going to do in terms of climate change. And I think that you have one party that's basically abdicated and said, we just don't care. We don't care about the science. We don't care about the facts. We just care about special interest groups. And Democrats, here's the thing. There was, I mentioned this last time I was on the show, there was going to be, there was a rumored debate that was going to be circled around climate change. But the fact of the matter is is that in the news business, talking about climate change is kind of a ratings killer. And so Hmm. as much as the news media may not always want to cover it, that still doesn't make it an important issue. And that still makes it an important issue in democratic politics. But the irony, the irony of that is the debate took place in Florida where climate change is actually a daily local news story because they're experiencing it every single day. And Florida should really have their education system. Whatever. But there's a, there's a yeah. sort of the way that you kind of get all of those things together. Uh, I've been reading... Bernie Sanders' recent book, Where We Go From Here, and he opens up with talking about uh, in 2016 when he decided to uh, basically step away from his campaign and help Hillary Clinton win the general. He, according to Bernie, he worked closely with Hillary and her campaign in terms of, and the Democratic Party, the DNC, to make an official party platform that was going to appeal not just to the middle of the road middle of the road liberal voters that liked Hillary but also the progressive left that looked at Bernie Sanders's revolution and thought this needs to be the way to go and that way you basically had largely what Sanders wanted which was a coalition of ideas with the Democratic Party um, and, of course, the flip side was the Republicans basically saying, let's be nice to Russia because, you know, the, the, then that campaign was actually trying to seek out information from uh, Russian officials or Russian contacts. Uh, but that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> um, so ultimately, that's where, uh, unfortunately, to get to the meat of it, the unfortunate thing is, is that the actual moment that you're going to see a consensus with the party will, will be, be in 2024 during the convention, because that'll be when a you'll have the one solitary candidate, although there could be multiple candidates there. And then it ultimately boils down to a state vote. Um, and then from there, you figure out what the platform is. And then basically you're strapped down to that until the general election. And, you know, anything obviously can change between the convention and the election, but, you know, the party has a lot of soul searching to do between now and the convention. And I think they really do need to figure out what exactly they want to do. Because there are a lot of these candidates these last few nights that really were just all over the place. And I I feel like, you know, just... to add what you're saying, like that's the the illustration that we're getting with 25 candidates and 20 people debates is like they really are all over the place and they really are trying to figure out what their agenda is and what their mission statement is. And it, it signifies that the party is very divided, you know. Well, everyone's everyone's losing their shit. We're all losing our shit. Look at where we're at. In our dime. It's like, how did we get here? I'm not losing my shit. I'm perfectly calm. Debatable. But yeah, Mancini, final notes on the debate. Final notes, I think they were all certainly well worth watching. Uh, I do think that, you know, in a, in a, to match it with a pop culture, recent pop culture event, I'd say that the first debate was kind of like when Thor bumped into the Guardians of the Galaxy, where you had one actual Avenger with a bunch of 
not yet Avengers, in the case of Elizabeth <laughs> Warren with a bunch of candidates that people had hardly heard of. And so she Gamora, is she going to get You don't even gonna like gonna superhero movies. movies. She's going to get she gonna, she gonna, she Gamora, she going to get everybody killed? Cuz technically Gamora got everybody killed. Anyway, well, and then the second debate was more or less like I said the fireworks that everyone was anticipating and you had the heavy hitters and then you had a, a few people that were amateurs and the amateurs either didn't get enough of what they wanted to say or they decided to just kind of sit back and sweat rather than assert themselves <laughs> and actually make a name for themselves in the debate. So it'll it'll certainly be fascinating. And once again, I'm just most curious to see who the hell is actually going to finally say, all right, it was all well and good, but I'm done. All right, man, CD, on that note, we thank you for taking some time to sh- share all this information with us. It was great stuff. You have a good night, sir. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. And uh, shout out to Andrew Martinez on that scoop today. Yes, sir. The Boston <laughs> Bomber Brief at Andrew Martinez. And you're at? I am at Mantini RA on Twitter. Yes, sir. Follow him for all your Santa Clarita news. And political, t- political, <laughs> and political commentary. And political care, commentary. Peace. And Star Wars stuff. Yeah, man. So lots to unpack there, but you know it's an important, important topical tangent that we have to go on sometimes because let's be real, no other NFL football sports show are going into it. So they're not even going to even try to do it. At least we are impartial about it. But hey, except Pete, he's getting payola from Yang. I know it. <laughs> I'm hot at your bitch ass. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, yeah. There's there's no doubt about it. I'm definitely on the the Yang game. So. You're, you're an intern. You're, you're you're trying to get a fellowship. I see it. Hey man, Sarah, like I, I just want to say something. I'll just believe. Fan? I'll just believe in people who believe in the little people. So. Oh, great, great campaign, campaign slogan. No, the gay. That sounds the, like that sounds like some shit you wrote. That's, that's no, not that's not even shit. that's not even his Who's campaign boiler slogan. Plate is that? Who's that's boiler not plate? that's not even his boilerplate. He has way more creative boilerplates than that. But I'm not going to promote them because. This good. isn't the platform for that. Good, good. So you can go to my Twitter handle <laughs> at, at P Certify, where I got plenty of Yang propaganda in which you can engage with. And paraphernalia? All right, cool. Political paraphernalia. Not, not yet, yet, man. I, 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 I'm not impressed enough with this debate to go out and buy merch. So, but like I said, man, the most important thing is he didn't dead himself. So, all right. Next up, we got. Your college football spot, which is really important this week, so I want to get to that before we get to the other stuff, which we probably won't get to. Yeah, we'll probably just speed that. We'll speed into that, whatever. But this part is huge. Um, college football news. Um, so, Mark Emmert, head of NCAA pretty much said that or threatened that if California schools um, they'll be banned from the NCAA title games and any titles if a bill in California passes that would give college collegiate athletes uh, the right to benefit from their names and likeness which should I am totally in support of that bill it should totally pass I think every state should do it to where every every person now but the state of California, it is legal for an athlete to benefit from their name financially. So when it comes to wait, can you break that down for yeah the yeah. Um, less NFL literate people like me? Okay, so Mark Emmert is the head of college football at mm-hmm. NCAA, California State Assembly. Uh, they're attempting Wait, to pass is NCAA just football or is it all sports? All sports, all sports all right. Okay, yeah. okay. They're a billion yeah, dollar Yeah, because there's Division One, Two, Three. Yeah. And then all sports, yeah. Okay. So the California State Assembly are attempting to pass a bill that would allow collegiate athletes within the state to receive compensation for usage of their likeness, name, or image. The NCAA president, Mark Emmert, implied that schools within the state would be banned from NCAA competition if the bill becomes law. So he's saying if this becomes the law in the state of California – any California team would be banned from the national championship game, 
uh, their division, like the Pac-12, whatever, those type, all those games, Mountain West, whatever. They will.